Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another Stock Twits Q&A session. I'm Brittany Umar here with Scott Red Dog Redler, ready to answer your questions live. How was your day today, Scott? <laughs> it was interesting. You know, we came in today not really knowing what to expect. Uh, very volatile week. You know, I came up, I came in mixed, actually. This is one of the first days I came in with not as many shorts, but I didn't have just looking for longs on the brain. I was looking for other shorts, maybe alternative plays in gold, this and that. We talked about it on the morning call today. You know, you remember I was like, okay, this week is one of those weeks where you want to make adjustments just in case, right. you know, between the volatility from Cyprus and, you know, Big Ben saying maybe the pace of purchase is a little less. So there's, there was longs and shorts today. It wasn't just clear cut and there's been some volatility. So, you know, traders are actually trading. Right. This morning, didn't you say you had six longs and two shorts? What, what are you ending yes. the day with today? Uh oh, I um I should talk to compliance. I don't know exactly, but I think I have maybe seven longs and three shorts, and one of those longs is the gold miners. So some would consider that a short because that's been a contrarian play. You know, you can see it on the virtual trade for it, or you know we'll have an article listed later that'll show what I'm long and short, and that's always on our site at night, so you could exactly see what I have. Because a lot sure. of times during the day, I, I try and talk about how many longs and how many shorts to talk about my conviction on direction. And I started the week with nine longs and one short, and I think now I might have six, seven longs and two, three shorts. So it's showing me that it was showing people that there's like a, you know, a, an unknown here and you can make money both sides and you just can't be blaring one way. How concerned are you about how big this pullback could get? Any signs that this pullback could be bigger than what we saw in February during the Italian elections? I think there are some different signs and the problem or just say the difference is some of the sectors that are starting to break down earlier that we didn't see during the Italian elections. And I think what's really important here is your time frame. Okay, everyone has a different set of risk. Everyone has a different time frame. What I want to show you is, you know, the chart of the SPX and show you how there was a gradual uptrend, you know, two times in the course of the past 12 months and then an accelerated one. Whereas if you were very short on short term time frame, you could have got out at the accelerated one and then waited to see what happened on the intermediate one. So let's just get to that chart. So you take a look here. I want to show you back here. I don't even want you looking at this yet. OK, this was um, last uh, summer. OK, remember this little area when you had the low that was put in over the summer and then we started rallying. OK, and then I think this is when the ECB said that they were going to do everything it takes to take convertibility risk off the table. And, you know, all of a sudden we had this accelerated trend line. OK, here is the top of the band that we pushed above. You know, this was after Big Ben spoke and this is when the oscillator hit like plus 70 and came back to, you know, came back to this accelerated trend where we followed. And then what happened is we broke through it, came back, retested it. And then this more gradual trend, which was right around the 50 day, wound up giving way, which, which gave us, you know, a pretty sizable correction down to the November 16th low. So you had a few different types of, of red flags here. They say that, you know, you have certain tops that aren't a point. It's a process. Well, within this process, you also had technology getting a little weaker. You saw some, you saw some things breaking down. So yeah, like almost a triple top here with a nice wide range bar. I think that's when even, um, you know, the S and P, I mean, the NASDAQ was below the 50 day and distribution days were adding up. So PS broke below, you know, little bear flag and then boom. So lo and behold, let's talk about where we are now. Okay, which you know I was drawing before to see, you know, because <laughs> we're in the beginning stages of this, and you never know in the beginning of the stages of this what it's going to lead to, so you measure some of the action. And this was the red dog reversal that started the rally back on November 16th. And here too, you almost had, you know, an accelerated rally. This was the accelerated trend that was, you know, pent up where you didn't have much pain and then it broke. And what did it do? It tested this more intermediate trend line. Then from there, we started the year. This was your igniting bar above the downtrend. Then we took out 1474, which was last year's high. And then we followed this accelerated trend line into the Italian elections. And then we had this wide range bar that engulfed the eight day. Then we got a little faulty when we broke the 21 day You know, bounced a little bit, failed here, wide range bar. But what do we do? We held this longer term trend line. It was fine. So from there, you bounced up went sideways, showing that, you know, we could potentially put some positions back on because I did take off some stock within this time period. And then we triggered above 1530 to then have another small pent up accelerated trend line. So, you know, if you look here, so to speak, OK, on what's going on, you now have a, a few different points of reference. You have your 21 day, which is right here, which we're not below yet. 
okay? You have the break here that if you wanted to take off some positions, it's okay. Why not? You don't know what's going to happen here. And, you know, at this point, you have defined resistance. Yeah, so this day was a pretty, a little ugly, but we're still above the 21 day. So the question is, you know, are we going to go and test this uh, trend line like we did over here, like we did over here? And if that's the case, you know, we could see more downward type of action. So we'll see what happens. And if we were to break this, who knows? You might even be able to see a little bit more. So at this point, I would say it's a time to be flexible. It's a time to, you know, if you were just say very bullish to be a little bit more neutral, I was a little bit more neutral early in the week. Now I'm a little bit more neutral to negative versus neutral to positive, and that's why I have a mixture of longs and shorts on. But if you're a macro investor, you, know, you better make sure that if you take off a lot of your longs that you put them back on if you see some type of intermediate trend change. So then would your answer to Stone Street Trader here then be a, a cautious yes when he asks, do you think this erratic action at upper levels is a red flag? Yes. And I think there are, are a few other red flags, which we talked about this morning. You know, remember we talked about the home builders making new highs? Right. Okay, but they were the only group. Mm -hmm. You know, that were the only group, the home builders by themselves making new highs. And then I was like, you know what? We should look at Goldman Sachs, because Goldman Sachs, which led the, the banks to the upside, didn't make new highs when the XLF did. It diverged. Maybe that'll give us some clues to the downside. Talked about actually when it broke 150.50, that was a, a small intermediate sign. So you go to Goldman Sachs, look what happened here. Okay, this was this ascending channel, okay, very pent up that wound up breaking to the downside. Okay, um, then all of a sudden it regrouped, went back, made a lower high, lower high, then you didn't know which way this wedge was going to break. And then first it broke this intermediate area, which was like 150, 50 we talked about. Then you had your inside day, and then boom, we took out the 50 day moving average. First time Goldman Sachs has done that in a long time. Look, during this whole rally, it never even took down the 21 day until here. So that's showing you some signs that there's some faulty action in the banks. Okay, and if you look at the home builders just real quickly, XHB, um, it had a breakout, and then look what it just did. It, it broke out into new highs, and let me get my little trusty crayon here, broke out into new highs, and then closed below it. That's sometimes something you don't want to see. So I would draw your line right here and say, okay, if it were to break this little uptrend, it too could see some corrective type action. And uh, you know, back to the XLF, you see how that made new highs. This did not. Okay, the XLF didn't make new highs. You know, here while the home builders did, and then you know, closed on the lows right near the 21 day. And if Goldman's already at the 50, chances are, I'm not saying this is gonna get to the 50, it could. And one last thing, look what the transports did. Poop, you know, what did I say, boom? <laughs> like poof. <laughs> I guess that's what comes out of, exhaust comes out of the transport sometimes. Right. And it looks like some exhaust came out of this sector, which was leading us. And now you look at this trend line here of, in the transports, it did not also make a new high. This is, you know, the home builders yesterday were going nuts. This didn't move at all. Okay, and then you, you look here, broke the eight day, it's already at the 21 day. It's had some support, but you know, it too, could see a bit more downside. And I think they scared the bejesus out of some people with, you know, look at FDX. That's, this is, boom. You look at FedEx, it's a mega cap. Got crushed to the 200 day, just like that. Engulfed this entire, uh, what was this, three months? So shows you a little danger. So with that being said, I think there are some more danger signs than I've seen in a while. So if you're an intermediate trend trader, you could pull back and then you could have better entries or you could get more involved when there's more clarity. Right. Okay. So let's talk about the financials. Actually, Stone Street Traders right on the money with his question because he said, do you think weakness in some leading financials like Goldman Sachs is a red flag, which you clearly just answered. So let's um, let's answer LP here who noted the, that the XLF has been weak recently after the Cyprus news broke. He says, do you think this group has lost momentum? What are your thoughts on Wells Fargo specifically? Okay, I think that the group didn't have power like the home builders, which was a small red flag. I think Goldman Sachs was another small red flag. And chances are when you have red flags, you know, you, you, you see him waving, you take some stuff down. So if you come to me, let's talk about, you know, different stocks within that sector. And Wells Fargo did start acting better lately. But if you look here, you know, again, um, you have a, a breakout. Okay, remember it broke out on this day and then you had an inside day, no follow through. Now it pretty much closed on the eighth day. So, you know, with that being said, if, if again, if Goldman Sachs is at the 50 day and so is the XLF, this is showing a little relative strength. Okay. And it's been a decent investment vehicle to just sit in. It didn't have a lot of the decline or a lot of the, the, whatever it is, the, the, the headlines like JP Morgan had, but overall, I still think, I think this is fine. This is just showing that some momentum's leaving. 
if we're going to correct, this is going to pull in. If you own it from all the way down here, or you own it from years back, I wouldn't be worried about it. I wouldn't be in tier two or tier three, but chances are it could see a test over here. And real quickly, you know, are there any questions about Bank yep, of America? Exactly. That was going to be my next question. We have a couple on Bank of America, which as we know, we've highlighted as a standout in the financials lately. Homie wants to know Homie. your technical outlook on Bank of America. And uh, Sin here wants to know, would you buy it here at 1257? See, you know, it, this morning people asked me, like, oh, you know, Karen from Fast Money was talking about selling calls against the long for Bank of America because it's had a big run. And I was like, okay, that makes sense, right? Stock in August was $8. Then it was at nine ninety five a few months back, and then it broke out. And then, you know, up at twelve seventy. if you don't want to sell your common because you might not get back into it because we might see some type of pullback, why not go out and sell three months and sell a $12 call and grab you know, some intrinsic value and some premium. So this way, if it does go back and forth for a while and create a new range, you can collect money. That's how you create your own dividend. So if you look here, I am still long some Bank of America, but you know, if we're gonna get a pullback in the sector, this is probably gonna pull back and it you know, hopefully pulls back the least. Okay, we've talked about entries and exits. Here is the first entry at $8, big move, topping tail. So some people might have sold into that and said, okay, I'm gonna sell, this is a topping tail but then never got back involved as it created another channel, which right here is where the core trader broke out from. Then you had a nice bull flag for continuation. Then remember right here, a lot of people were texting me. They said, Red Dog, did you see that wide range bar? I'm out of Bank of America. It's due for a pull in and this is faulty, which I said, okay, because look, you had this accelerated trend break to the downside. What happened from there? Found support at 11 bucks and then regroup. So if you didn't get back in the regroup, you didn't catch the next new high. So the, 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 the question is, what now, as you know, we're a little bit overbought in the markets, so or not even overbought, but you know, a little action that could warrant a correction, you could see Bank of America not hold the most pent up breakout level or the eight day. It could pull back to the 21 day. So you know, why not sell some, but hold some you know, until it acts better? If you're playing it for momentum, I don't think we're gonna get Bank of America to have momentum until the market finds its footing. So if you're playing and think we're going to pull back, do I think it falls apart and breaks below 11 and hits the, the 200 day at 10, 11? No. I think maybe it gets down to the 21 day. And if it gets to the 21 day and all the other stocks go below it and we turn up, you better get you know, overweighted in Bank of America because the next move, which I still think is intact you know, for the monthly chart, you know, could be to the 15 to $17 range. So it's just got to know your time frame and your involvement in the market. All right, well, while we're at it, let's check in on Citigroup because we have one from Jane here asking for your thoughts on it. And it did close down uh, almost 2% today. Um, this one has been a, a decent leader. You know, the stress test, they had it with high marks. They gave it a little push, but you know, it's come a long way and there's going to be volatility in Citigroup. So you look here, you know, I've traded it from time to time. I don't own it now. I think it's uh, relatively, you know, in the game, just like Bank of America. But you could see here, it's already below the eight where Bank of America is, and it's already at the 21 day. And, you know, if Citigroup's going to, I mean, if Goldman's going to pull back and the bank's going to pull back, I bet you this gets to the 50 day. So, you know, here is your last prior breakout area of flag. So this resistance could become support right here. Here is your upper level flag where if you were playing for momentum, you had to say to yourself, momentum just left. Okay. Uh, here's your triangle that didn't resolve to the upside, but to the downside, closing the lows. You know, some people are probably short this. And I would think that if you're looking for an entry, I'd wait a little bit towards the, you know, the 50 day. Because again, Goldman Sachs broke the 50 day. <laughs> Citigroup tends to not be as strong as Goldman Sachs, but it's a little stronger now. And last but let not least, I'm just going to talk about Morgan, which I don't like at all. Okay, it's one of the first that are back to, you know, the gap that started the year. I know. I tried to play it a few times and it gets my number every time. I bought it into here, got hurt, and then whatever, I got stopped out here. And now it looks like it's breaking some big support. It's below the 50, it's below all the moving averages, and it's ready to go into a gap. So I'd be careful if you played this for catch up because it was showing relative weakness. And once the market starts, stops broadening out, the, the weaker ones get hit the fastest. So see what happens with this gap here. All right, well, keep the questions coming. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. I'm Mark Sperling, Director of Trading with T3 Trading Group and contributor to T3 Live. Do you trade on your own, but you wish you enjoyed the benefits of a large trading floor? With the T3 Live Virtual Trading Floor, we deliver that experience to you on your computer. On the VTF, you can follow the long and short positions of experienced professional traders like myself, Scott Redler, and others, and listen to our live radio stations as we navigate the markets. In addition, you get the added value of a large community of sophisticated and like-minded traders. 
Your membership to the virtual trading floor also includes access to our two very popular newsletter products, Off the Charts and the Price Point Sheet at no additional cost. In my opinion, joining the room will be the best trading decision you will ever make. I would like to invite you to begin your membership with a seven day free trial. To get started, visit t3live.com and click on the virtual trading floor tab. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the BTF. We're back and answering your questions live. In this morning's morning call, we highlighted 3D Systems as a stock that was showing some strength. Scott, you mentioned the 30-ish level as a buy level. The stock did close up nearly 4% at 30.57 today, and we're getting a lot of questions about it. So let's handle a couple of these here. Andy wants to know uh, what triggered the buy on 3D Systems. Was this a day trade only? And uh, iParallax says uh, it looks like a possible trend change here. Do you believe so? I think as of now, it was a good day trade and can it be a possible trend trade? Yeah, and you know why? Because I'll, I'll discuss what needs to take place. I think this stock in general, I could probably go through it in like three, four minutes and show you like five different technical, tactical rules that you could have seen to avoid some pain, maybe to make some money short and potentially make money moving forward from here. If you look right here at the chart, you will see. Um, you go back to right here, okay, the stock looked decent, okay, right? Looked like it's flagging up at the highs, but what did you see? So a green day, red day, green day, red day. That was a little erratic all the way up here as it was extended from the eighth day. Then what happened? Boom. Look at the size of this wide range bar, this potent wide range bar where people said, get me out of this, okay? And it engulfed this entire range, okay? And then from there, you had a little mini reversal, okay, which was decent for people like, oh, this is it. It's a new trend. It wound up being a day trade. Okay, and then let's just fast forward a little bit to where we are now. You know, it had a nice little reversal here, came back up, made a lower high. And then if you were in that camp saying, okay, Triple D is going to be back in new highs very soon. Here is your, you know, your level, so to speak, where you had the, the 8 and 21 day. And then once it broke this level, you had to say, okay, no, it's a lower high. I better get out of the way. And then you had a move lower. Then you had a, a, a bigger support area that I wanted to breaking through. I remember here too saying that this looks to me like it could have capitulated into this trend line and it was a decent trade and then right around here that that was the first target was it going to take back this support that turned into resistance and it didn't and then it came lower broke lower and and ps here we are around the 200 day and you know typically if you're a seller at the 200 day you've missed a lot of signals you know but the rule is if it reclaims the 200 day you know it, it could be something to watch so for me you know, I drew my little trusty line like this, okay? Almost like you had a nice descending, <laughs> this is all marked up, descending channel here. Here was your defined area. I said, you know, I, at first I tried a little trade back here, it didn't really work. And then today it went down first and it was bucking the trend, showing relative strength. So I said, you know what, this thing gets above 30.30, I'm a buyer. So I bought some there, I actually bought a call spread, just so everyone knows, I think I bought in April. I bought uh, the 30s, I think I paid $1.70 and because this to me is resistance right here at the 21 day, I sold the 33s for like 60 cents. So I paid a dollar to, to have triple D for what could be, you know, a $3 option paying a dollar. So it's, you know, $2 profit. That's two to one. You know, that to me, that's nice risk reward and an option. Then I don't have to worry about if some bad news happens and it continues lower. And then I'll also day trade it. It closed well. So I'm in a little bit of common as well. So overall, I think that if it was a start, it diverged versus the market. You know, you want to put volume in here just to check out what type of volume we had today to see if there was any commitment to it. You go to volume, decent amount, you know, not blockbuster volume like you had on this day, but you know, that led to a little bit of a bounce, but decent. So, you know, I am long and it's one of my longs and I have a call spread and it's up to this stock to move up and then put in a higher low and then potentially move up again. And it's got a lot to prove as it's got to take back a lot of those moving averages. But for right now, I think it looks okay. All right. Well, you know we have to talk Apple. <laughs> of course, we talked in today's morning call that Apple took a bit of a break yesterday, but has been acting better. Uh, stock closed. Let's see where did it close slightly up today. Uh, Fernando says, with the market pulling back, does your play for Apple to 480 seem unlikely to happen? Um, at this point, it's kind of tricky because some people have been saying, which I was in the camp that you know the, the market had a huge move. Okay, and during that huge move. Um, markets went up and Apple went down. <laughs> so now it feels as if, you know, the, the programmers or the black boxes or the algos are like, okay, now on down days, it seems like Apple goes up. It's almost like a safe haven play. But then also when the market's been up too, it's been up a little bit. So I'm trying not to put too much 
uh, emphasis on if the market goes down, can Apple do that? If the market goes up, what will Apple do then? You know, I'm looking at the downtrend line and I'm looking at commitment. And last week, right around this time, I think well, we had a show last week, right? Mm -hmm. Talked about being long a call spread. Yep. Okay, into Friday with 440 as also a spot to add for, you know, common. And you had a nice move from 440 to the highs of almost 460. And then there, I was like, okay, it's probably going to see the 50 day and get some resistance and then need to change and hold higher, show some commitment. So you go to the chart here of Apple, you will see that here is, you know, just r real quickly when you had this earnings, remember that bad earnings that took three days to digest and then the market didn't care, went up, held higher, then followed the 8 and 21 day all the way to the peak at 700. And this is when this composure changed. And again, at this composure change, you never knew what was going to take place. But if you sold, you didn't have to. You could have said, okay, I'm going to sell the 21 day, test the 50 day, <laughs> tested the 50 day, three day bounce, broke it, little bounce, broke it, lo and behold, all the way down to this red dog reversal. Okay, I just want to show you this one because this one actually meant, you know, went a little bit higher and this was a decent bounce. Here is your red dog reversal just for the strategy because people ask me all the time, what's the strategy here? Low is 522. This put in a low at 505. Once it recrossed 522, that was your entry with the stop at the low here. Then from there, you had a gap up, appetite. And then after a, a big move, because if you think about from 505 to, uh, what was that, 567, you want to see some commitment. So here is your commitment. Two inside days, then it started to go again before topping out at the trend line. And then look at this big move to the downside. That shouldn't have happened. So that means it was just a bounce. But it was a nice one and tradable. So, you know, fast forward to where we are now. Um, this was your low area. This is your 420. This is when it started to act a little bit better going to the Samsung event. This is when I put on that call spread. And, and now here we are above this recent descending trend line. You know, today it tried to go and ran out of gas. It would have been nice. I don't know if it ran out of gas because of the market. Who knows what the, the, the case in point was. I'm, I actually, my call spread that I had here went worthless. Not worthless. I'm sorry. It got capped out. You know, it was, I think, a... A $3 net cost, I made six and a half, so it was good. So what I did today, which I tweeted, um, if, if you're in the camp that you think it's going to take back the 50-day, which it could, with some power, then you would think that it could get to at least this previous pivot, which is 480, right? Commitment, bull flag to this. Let's see how long it takes to reclaim this. It reclaims, it closes it. You should see it move quickly. So what I did is I bought the 460s today. I think I paid almost $4.00. And I sold the 470s for, uh, I believe, like $1.70 or so, something like that. So I paid like $2.50. So you have $10 of intrinsic value. So I can make $7.50. So kind of like I just made here, I'm rolling them out. I'll also trade it intraday, but at least I won't have the anxiety if they come out with some news with the dividend, the news about the buyback. I'm in enough that I feel comfortable and I also know my risk just in case it does fail. So at this point, I would say short term, here's your line in the sand, 448.50 if we were to break this. Yes, it could probably retest this trend line and still be okay, but I, I think a lot of fast money guys don't want to see that happen. And then the longer it stays above this area, the higher the probability you could take out the 50 day with authority, and then you see that level, and then you have to see how it handles that. And then ultimately, the 200 day is, is all the way up here, which you know, feels like that would be, you know, for traders that, are, that didn't get caught, this is a really nice move. And so far, it feels like we just had a big rally, but look where we are <laughs> relative to that. So all in all, I'm trying to stay with this trade as long as I see commitment. And as of right now, I do see some commitment. So it sounds like you're a little bit more optimistic than you were mm. a few weeks ago. You were so frustrated with throwing your hands mm. up in the air about Apple. It's, you're always frustrated until you're not about <laughs> Apple. And the reason why everyone you know, kind of gravitates to it, because there is opportunity when it works. You know, there's got opportunity to do a call spread, risk $3 and make seven. You know, or opportunity where you could buy 440 and within three days it's at 460. So that's why I talk about level versus level. So on the way down, you know, if you have some paper cuts for four to six dollars or three to five dollars, whatever it is, you know, trying to feel out levels, once you catch a $20 move in the common or a nice double or triple in the options, you make it back and then then some. But if you try and cost average all the way down, like some people started at 600 or 540 or 480, you get a little $30 bounce, it means nothing because you're still underwater, you're still holding your breath and you broke a lot of different rules. So anyway, at this point, there is some commitment there. And you know, with this commitment, I'm gonna stay committed. I'd love to hold this longer. I'd love to ride this higher. And if the stock lets me do so, I'll be there along the ride. <laughs> All right, sounds good. We're gonna take another quick commercial break. We'll be right back. 
I'm Evan Lazarus, Chief Knowledge Officer for T3Live.com. You don't become a great trader by watching videos and taking courses. You become a great trader through live screen time. Accelerate that learning curve by tapping into the experience of seasoned professionals. Currently, we're offering five-day free trials to each of our four mentoring rooms. In the mentoring rooms, we teach our strategies in the context of the live market. To sign up for a free trial, go to the T3Live education page, fill out the form, and get started when the next trading session begins. We hope to see you in one of our mentoring rooms. We're back and answering your questions live. Let's get to one from Kickserve, who says, Scott, would you consider Cree a red dog reversal now? You know, a few different people were hitting me up on that, even on my site, and I said, let's check it out. It's been a strong stock, and some of these strong stocks where people have been just trying to short without a pattern, at least have one. So you go to the chart of Cree here, and you will see that you know what, you, you did have a small red dog reversal. What that means is it pushes through a high, buyers come in, think they're gonna get a momentum trade, and then it closes below. Wasn't a blaring red dog reversal, but you know, you look at the size of the move that this has had, it's still showing relative strength, so I, I wouldn't be putting too much behind it, but if you want to short it, you know, your entry was when it traded back below this 54.93, okay? And your high, or your stop needs to be this high here, 55.53. It is a small one, but that's almost not enough. It's kind of extended, but it's still, you know, as of now, it seems a little bit best in breed, above the 8, above the 21. But if you were playing it for momentum and you bought, just say you were in Tier 1, you went to Tier 2, once you closed back below this, you'd be in Tier 1. And if you were looking for a short during this time frame, here is the first partial sign. So it's worth a try here, but make sure this is your stop, and hopefully you don't have any news come out and it gaps above it. All right, let's talk Hewlett Packard. Lots of news about the company this week. The board barely survived the chopping block. The company announced a 10% increase in its dividend today. Closed down. What do you think? Um, this one, I've been, I've been sort of bashing it the last week. And everyone's like, you know, Hewlett Packard, everyone's starting to get bullish. The, some upgrades are coming. And they're like, oh, can we buy Hewlett? I'm like, why? I'm like, this is such a big move. I don't like their, their, under, their overall business, whatever. You know, I was waiting for some type of um, pattern to set up. So, for me, I was avoiding and avoiding, and it was kind of interesting. Uh, Matt, who's uh, on my Twitter sphere, which I gave him some props, um, besides some people on my you know, virtual trade floor who knew that I didn't like it, yesterday we were like, oh, did you see the Red Dog Reversal being put together in Hewlett Packard? It's pretty, it's pretty blaring. You have an RSI over 85. You know, market was going up yesterday. It went negative. I'm like, oh, look at this. This, this is a good setup for Hewlett Packard. Let me get short. You know, and I don't love shorting things, but I'm like, I'm going to short this. It's extended from the 8-day, extended from the 21-day. You know, you look at the chart of Hewlett Packard, and you will see that, you know, it's had a heck of a run. A heck of a run from the low here. You, ever, you know, I, I, it made sense. I think I even talked about it, you know, coming in, you had the dogs of the Dow theory. And then even when it crossed this little downtrend, you're like, it could go further. came back, retested. Here is your gap up. So there's been a lot of bullish um, technicals here. Then you had another gap up through the 200-day, and then... Look at this big run, but this was getting a little long in the tooth. If you think about it, Hewlett Packard, it, it more than doubled from the lows. Imagine if you know, Apple doubled from the lows. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, so finally, this is your red dog reversal from this way. And we talked about it, I think, uh, in yesterday's morning, in today's morning call also, where it pushed through um, 23.14. So people got squeezed. that have been trying to short this this whole way up because there's been a lot of people trying to short this. So you got squeezed or people chased it because it's been, oh, the dividend's coming, the dividend's coming. Meanwhile, it closed below, so that's why it got short. And then your ad was supposed to be when it traded below yesterday's low for more cash flow. And here we are at the 21-day, closing the lows. I still, I, I mean, sorry, the 8-day, I, I still think it can get down to here. Um, I do have probably half of what I had overnight yesterday, um, and I'm going to let it ride out. And so far, so good. You also have a, a trend here that it could come in and test from you know, this minor breakout. So I think that uh, here, this is viable without it falling apart. Okay? And obviously, Oracle helped. Oracle came out with news, and you know, it got down to the 200-day, and wasn't expecting that at all. Didn't let anyone out. So let's look at this blaring hole now in Oracle. So I, I, I could see why some people would be, you know, fearful to, to you know, to be, sh you know, long Hewlett Packard after a huge move. I know they have different business models, but they, they have some overlap. And even today, just uh, another technical rule we talked about, you know, I, it was pre-market and uh, Hewlett Packard increased their dividend. So everyone's like, oh, Red Dog, we're short this, we're going to get screwed. You know, I'm like, just let's see, you know, maybe some people get scared, but if it doesn't go up, 
on something it's anticipation to go up on, like a dividend increase. Right. Maybe it went up already because of that, which it did. You know, it could then let, lend fuel to the downside because now all the catalysts are out of the way. And there's probably going to be nothing that comes up besides business news, which I can't believe it would be so good in Hewlett Packard, con considering, you know, the PC sector slowing down. I don't know if they have any innovative, great new products. So anyway, it was working out and I'm trailing it from the short side. And I think a lot of people in the Twitter sphere caught it with me. So if you did, I'm happy. That's what I try and add value there for. A lot of you guys were very, you know, thankful. So it's good to get praise and help people. And there's room in these stocks for everyone to make money if you approach it tactically with a plan. Yeah, helping people. That's what we're trying to do right now, right? Yes. There you go. <laughs> Let's talk Ford, which obviously made headlines today after news that it's European uh, sales slid. Its concerns are definitely growing in that region. Um, Schwartz here, he just says bullish. So I'm assuming that you're bullish um, on Ford, but he wants to know what you think of its chart. Okay, um, Ford has been one of my swing trades, and I've been in it, and it's been working. It's not a barn burner. And then today I tweeted, I said, you know what, it looks pretty good. It's got to get above, uh, go to the chart this area because look what GM did. But this was before a lot of weakness came in today. So um, I, I'm still in it, but I'm not in what I added. I, I took a loss on that. So if you look here at Ford, you will see this is one of the, the areas we spoke about right here. So I remember being in like tier one around here, added to tier two when it crossed above this area. And then it started to, you know, it hold. And I think into this, I got back to tier one. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to hold Ford. And then today I tweeted, I said, you know what? If Ford can get above, what was this, 1345, you know, and the market stays stable, why not another move? Okay, because if you look, it still has room. It's, you know, the market wants to be bullish. I know it's come a long way also. Actually, look at this. It's come a really long way. I guess you go to the weekly chart and you will see that it hasn't come that far from the weekly chart. It was as high as 18 you know, coming into almost, uh, you know, what is that, it's beginning of 2011. So anyway, you know, really just to make it simple, okay, I was hoping that this would create a platform to, to go through and add for momentum, and it hasn't yet. So just say if I was in Tier 1 and went to Tier 2, I pulled in, I went back to Tier 1. Okay, you look at GM, I was looking for something similar like this, um, where, where GM had a nice trade, okay, right, right through here. But then look at this inside day. So, I'd be, you know, I would, if he's in GM, I would just make sure it holds above this area. But overall, that's kind of what I was looking for. And it got stuffed, so to speak, by the market. So I'm in tier one and I'm not going to add to it until it breaks above 1345 and holds above it. And then if it were to start breaking below the 21 day, I probably would be out of it and just revisit. That means the market's getting really weak and I don't need to have that many longs on. All right. Let's answer Fly Trader here who's calling you Pink Dog. Uh, pink sure is catching his attention. Real men can wear pink. <laughs> He's asking if it's game over per, for PCYC. And, PCYC. Uh, yeah, huh? this is down almost 8.5%. This, this probably was something that shorts jumped on. You know, you look here at the chart, that's something that I'm not that familiar with. But if you go to the chart, you will see that, um, you know, not really that many signs, except for here was your high and it started trickling lower. This was when it broke out right here. And this was a, a high level area that you would have wanted to have a stop. Right here's um, the peak. This is support that it held. Um, probably shouldn't have broke below this. Okay, this was your you know red flag number one. If you were trying to play for another move to the upside, it took that off the table right here. Then it held right there, you know, bigger support, and then got red real quick, and then boom. Now it's coming into the 50-day. I would I would stay away for now until you see some kind of reversal type pattern. You know, uh, whether it's a red dog reversal or whatnot, maybe pushes through the 50-day, comes back up. You get a bottom tail like this, and then it you know, starts to regroup, but overall, uh, the momentum has left here. It looks like a lot of other things right now. So I would just be careful there, especially a pharmacy company. For me, you know, there's always news that can come out and you better know what it is and have some, some backbone to it versus just charts, unless right. you can do it intraday for these. Right, okay, so what are your thoughts on QCOR here? Bless is asking what your thoughts are on this stock due to its upward movement today. Um, this one still seems like it's a, it's ignoring <laughs> what went on today or what went on in the last few days. And that's something that biotechs can do, you know, every now and then. So if we look here at the chart, um, there you go. Here it, it broke above uh, this recent range. I don't know if it's because of news or whatnot, but something happened here. Wow, nuts to the downside. And it's been in a, since September, it's been in a long lower level consolidation. Seems like it broke it right here, had some follow through. Then, you know, pulled in, held the 21 day and started to go and pulled off a little bit. Who knows if, whether it's because of the market. But I would think, you know, if you look 50 percent into this wide range bar, it still has room. OK. And it started to negate some of this power here. Um, but I don't know that much about it. It does seem like it's still strong, but you're probably going to get, 
you know, a, a load of resistance coming into, you know, this area of the chart. So it's going to have to have something fundamentally that's changed here. You know, maybe that this bad news that was that caused this to to be changed or different, or maybe a new drug or whatever is going on here for this to take it out. But overall, it's it's looking higher, but it's a laggard. You know, when laggard stocks or trades um, lose momentum, you got to get out quick because they're laggards for a reason usually. All right, Ultra Petroleum Corp, UPL. We have a question from Van Handel, says UPL bouncing hard off the 200 day twice this week, fill the gap below. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> UPL, something I don't trade that often. You go to the daily chart, obviously it's a laggard. Look when it made the ties way back when, it's been in a sharp downtrend. Um, look a little closer up, I guess, here. Um, this was when it got sort of exciting, right? It broke this downtrend with authority, with some an igniting bar. Then you had commitment to it, right? It held higher, went again. Here is a small red dog reversal into the 200 day. They squeezed it up, came back lower. And now it seems like it's trying to hold higher. So I would be trading it versus support. You know, it's, it is acting better, but in order to get some momentum, it's going to get, it has needs to get back above the 200 day and stay above it for it to continue. So, you know, this was a nice flag after the igniting bar showed commitment for further upside. It's got to do it again. If you're not committed to it, here's your stop. If you're looking for momentum, it's got to get through there. And uh, overall, though, it's a laggard situation that, um, you know, it's going to have a, a whole load of resistance anyway coming right back into these old memories. So if you're playing a laggard play, you better be playing it for a reason. And when you see some commitment leave, you better leave just as quick. All right, Golden Snuff here is asking. Golden Snuff? <laughs> I just read it. He's asking uh, your thoughts on Lennar. Okay. Um, Yesterday, I didn't look at it today, had the earnings, made new highs. It'd right. be interesting to see how much of it held. Um, if it, the rest of the market pulled it in, um, then you'll, you'll see that it could be a little troublesome, which it somewhat did. If Lenar was going to be that strong, so far it didn't give it all up, so it's okay. You know, it should have held a little bit higher or should have had follow through. But we talked about this this morning, saying the home builders can't do it on their own. It's either the home builders are going to bring other sectors to new highs and show leadership, or the home builders are going to be brought back down because no other sectors want to join the move. And if you look across the board, you know, XLI didn't want to make new highs, turn lower. Um, IYT, we showed you before, you know, broke this, turn lower. XLF didn't join the new high scenario. So all of a sudden, the XHB, which made a new high yesterday above resistance, got a little scared. So the question is, if we continue to follow through to the downside, this could break for a move down to the 21 or the 50, because look, we came down here the last time. So just be a little careful and know your time frame with Lennar. If it, you know, it, it doesn't have to be that pent up, but I would say on an intermediate basis, watch those moving averages right around here, which is, um, you know, the, the, right, comes in around 40. So if you're playing it for momentum, it's going to be hard for it to have momentum if nothing else wants to have any kind of strength, you know, at highs. So this might not be a market to, you know, buy high and try and sell higher. Okay, sometimes you're not in that environment and there's been a lack of momentum in a lot of the momentum names as well where you can't buy high and sell higher, kind of like Netflix and LinkedIn and Google. They've all been trying to get some footing, but there's no traction there. So it's just another small red flag. All right, how about MGM? We've talked a lot about MGM in the morning call. We have Turbo Gumbo here <laughs> saying uh, if you could please comment on MGM and uh, what you think of it right here. And it closed down 1.3% today. This is one of my stocks, also one of my longs, and it's been trying to hold that move that we saw on the on the Kirk Corey news um, that he could buy up to 25 percent. So with that said, you know, I've been trailing it. You know, I don't have as much on as I had that day that it broke out. But as, if there's commitment, I'm going to stay small in it. And then if it goes again, I'll add to it. And if you look here at MGM overall, you know, it's not a leadership type name, but the casinos have been strong. Um, I tend to go to this every now and then. And this is when I went after it the last time, right around 11, had a really nice move. And then if you look here, had a breakout failure. This is when I got stopped out. And then all of a sudden, tried to resume. And this was your re-entry here. So what's it trying to do? It's trying to hold a little bit higher. So I did add to it today, okay, when it looked better. <laughs> and it looked like the market was going to go. But then I went back to my original tier one because I'm only going to get to a bigger tier if it starts to get in motion. To get in motion, it's got to clear this area. You know, if... If it starts to break below this area, I'll probably stop myself out and revisit it because there's no reason to hold a stock like this, you know, when I can be as active and get back into it. But I'm hoping it holds this area and then perhaps even takes out 1350 because on the more macro level, you know, I do think at some point, you know, if our economy continues to get a little bit better, which I do think so, you have this long weekly channel here 
and I know it's come a lot off the lows, that I do think at some point it could contend with and uh, you know, be uh, a 20 to $25 stock. It's just a matter of when it's ready to do so. And I'm not going to fight a long channel like this, but I like a, a channel like that to get going, kind of like what I do with Yahoo. If you remember, everyone hated Yahoo. Look at this mess for a long time. And then finally, it was ready to break out when it went above 1660, when the earnings led it and people liked Marissa Mayer and this and that, and boom. But look at the size of this choppiness. Little trades, little trades, little trades until finally it went. So with MGM, there could be a time and place for that. But as of now, it's still just, you know, in active trade, small size. And one day it could be turned into a macro runner. All right. What about silver? We have fired up here saying the SLV has been trading in a tight range for the past month. Where do you see it going from here? Silver, silver and gold. Very uh, tricky creatures, <laughs> so to speak. That's why people wear them around their head, I guess, or wherever they wear them. I don't know. <laughs> around their neck. Their neck and their <laughs> fingers. And, uh, you know, today was a day, you know, for gold and silver and the, the miners. And I talked about that this morning. You know, I got a lot of emails saying, oh, the market's getting a little faulty. Gold's holding up a little better. Silver's holding up a little better. Look at the miners. And I said, okay, Red Dog could look at the miners. You know, like, I'm not a perma bull. I'm, I'm a trader and I trade things. And uh, you could see by me being long some things, short some things, I feel more comfortable sometimes being long. But anyway, to make a long story never short, <laughs> here is uh, silver. Okay, that's one trend line. Here's another trend line. So here's big support. Today it gapped up, but you really didn't get much power or follow through. It gapped up and held. So I would say perhaps you, you now have a gap, okay, which could show some more power, could show some continuation. but. You know, trade it versus. If this starts to trade back below 28.18, chances are, you know, you're not going to get much movement. If the, if it wants to, why can't it get you at least a leap reflex to 29-ish? Okay, you look at gold since we're talking about it. Um, remember the last time I had a long in GLD? It looked as if it was going to break this descending channel, and it didn't. It broke to the downside. Well, anyway, it wound up holding macro support. Here, you know, it broke a little bit to the upside held support, this 155, and today it was up. But again, look at this. This isn't like a powerful, igniting, I'm back in the game move. It's a, okay, I'm not pulling in like I've pulled in so many other times. So anyway, you, you do have some room to 157.84, then maybe the 200 day, but it doesn't look like it's a barn burning move, I guess, until it does. And at this point you could stay with it. And I went with the GDX today, bought the open, I wasn't in it overnight. Um, Quite a decent trade. The reason why I went, you know, here, I remember on this Red Dog reversal, some guys got me involved and it was a decent day and a half trade. And then I remember this level here. So I did buy some around 37.85. I added through 38 and I have some overnight. So we'll see. Maybe this can go. You have a big trend line here where it's not even near. Um, you do have a breaking above a, a small downtrend. So there is some room here and, you know, maybe it's just a trade or uh, maybe it's bigger. But at this point, Close near the highs. I think there's room. I don't have as much as I had intraday, but I have some overnight and I'm going to trail it. All right. So in summation, what are your thoughts heading into the last trading day of the week? <laughs> I hope tomorrow is <laughs> a, <laughs> a good day. <laughs> not so complicated. I felt like on Tuesday, it was almost like we were, you know, if you come back to us, Andrew, we're talking here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> real time. Um, you know, I, I would say that it's been a long week. The, the, the news came in on Saturday and Sunday, so I feel like people have been checking their, their handheld all week, you know, from, from Saturday and Sunday, you know, and then finally, like on Tuesday, we were like, wow, you know, it's, it's, it feels like it's Thursday. Well, now it's Thursday, and I guess we still have Friday to come in, in, in front of us. So with that said, um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't be doing too much in this time period. Okay, I know that there are a lot of people out there that want to be so short this market. They say, this is it. This is the time. We're going to fall apart. I'm going to make all my money back from rolling it up. Okay, maybe it is, but just do what you can be comfortable. Same way you know, there are guys out there that say, you know what? The road to 1700, if it exists, I'm staying long. I'm staying in as much as I can because, you know, at some point we're going to turn back up. But the question is, can you handle that? And if you were jumping out of your skin Sunday night when you saw the futures down 15, 16 handles, obviously you had too much on, you probably couldn't handle it. So we talked about adjustments this week, getting a little flexible, put on some hedges and maybe taking off some tiers, but staying with it. So overall, I think we're in an environment right now where the volatility is picked up so you can make money trading. You could use ranges to base your hedges on or some stocks on. I do think we've seen some faulty action that could add up to a bigger move lower than we saw during the Italian elections, but we don't know yet. So you don't always have to know. You can be flexible. 
have positions you like, they start breaking moving averages that you don't hold if they do break those on our stops. And just make sure if you get out and you're happy in a week where it's lower, you know, two weeks or a month from now, if it turns up, make sure you get back in if you want to be in it, you know, for a longer term time frame. So overall, you know, we're not in this pent up bull tape right now. I think it's a little wishy-washy and all stocks aren't created equal. You could be long some things and short some things. And I just think, you know, low gross, low net. Is, is a way to go. That means a little less is more until we get some more clarity and, and know what's cooking out there. And hopefully tomorrow's a smooth day. Smooth yes. Friday. Everybody could use it. Yes. All right. Thanks, everybody, for your great questions. We'll meet you back here next week. Have a great night.